This video will show how to replace a receptacle block on an electric stove. Before beginning the video, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the importance of replacement parts. A few years ago, I bought this universal fit receptacle block because at the time I couldn't find an OEM part or an exact replacement part made by another manufacturer. The quality of the part was poor and the fit was bad. It failed in just two years. I was able to find an exact replacement non-OEM part. I rarely recommend a manufacturer in my videos. I have found the quality of exact replacement parts brand to be pretty good. Buy a OEM part if you can. Be careful. Some appliance parts sellers will advertise the OEM part and send you a cheap knockoff. One more important thing is that if the terminal ends of the surface element are charred and pitted like this one, here's the terminal ends of a brand new burner. You can see that they're shiny and not blackened or pitted. The terminals can be cleaned up. If they are very pitted or scored, the element will be slow to heat up and it may not heat fully cherry red on the high setting. To prevent accidental electrocution, disconnect power to the stove while working on it. Remove the surface element. Remove the receptacle block. Some stovetops lift up. This one doesn't, so I'll have to access the wiring to the receptacle block by just pulling it out from underneath the stovetop. Look for a hinge point in this area of your stove. If there's a hinge, then the entire stovetop will lift up on your model. Disconnect the wiring that goes from the receptacle block to the control switch. Ceramic connectors are preferable over these plastic ones that came with the replacement receptacle block. The ceramic ones are less likely to melt under the high heat conditions in the area of the heating element. Strip the cover off of the wire. It's been tough to get the covering off of uh, this wiring, probably because it's old and it's been um, exposed to heat over the years. So you might have to fight with it a little bit to get it off. Uh, just be careful that you don't cut any of these strands of wire. Connect one of the wires from the receptacle block to one of the wires that goes to the control switch. Make sure you have a tight connection. Typically when you have the two uh, conductors twist around and you can give a pull on the connector. That's a secure connection. Repeat that process with the other wire from the receptacle block and the wire that goes to the control switch. It doesn't matter uh, which pair go to which as long as you have a wire from the receptacle block to each one of the wires that come from the control switch. Some people like to slip the heat shrink on one of the wires first and then they also like to uh, fold these wires over. I don't like to do that. Um, I like to keep the connection like this 
and of course you'd want to do this ahead of time and make sure that your heat shrink does fit over the connector. I'll use a heat gun to shrink down the heat shrink. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter or you could use a soldering iron. Just run the barrel of the soldering iron along the heat shrink. Slip the receptacle block into the bracket. Reinstall the receptacle block onto the stove top. Reinstall the surface element. Reconnect power. And you're done. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name, Know How Now, to find other videos. And thanks for watching.